came to y'all hoping that you would keep me from buying something. And no, no, you did not. You're listening to the Creative Faith and Friends podcast, episode number five. Welcome to the Creative Faith and Friends podcast, where we talk about art and art supplies and faith and what happens when you combine them. I'm your host, Melissa Olson from PinkPaperPeppermints.com, and today we are beginning a brand new series on creativity, and our art supply topic is paper. So as you can imagine, we ran a little long today, but boy, do we have some fun things to tell you about. And there was a supply development after we recorded the podcast, so be sure to stick around until the end when I tell you all about it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Well, welcome to the Creative Faith and Friends podcast. I'm Melissa Olson, your host, and I'm here with my two co-hosts, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hey there. And Jess. Hi, Jessica. Hey, y'all. And we are talking about creativity. And today we're going to be talking about just how to get started. When you feel creative, you want to do something creative, but you really don't know how to start. So we're going to be talking about that. But first, we're going to have a new segment that we are calling Happy Mail. And we wanted to share with you some of the fun letters and emails and reviews and comments that we've been getting about the podcast. And we just absolutely love hearing from you. And so we thought it would be fun to share some of our Happy Mail. So the first one is from Nepi, and she left this comment on the blog on the show notes. And she said, I just finished listening to you lovely ladies. Thank you, Neppy. You're so nice. (laughs) And I enjoyed the tips on finding my style. It's so true about practice. When I first started to collage, I had a hard time and my projects were something I didn't want to share or use. After much practice, I'm getting better and now I want to do it all the time. I have stacks and stacks of collage papers. Looking forward to the weeks ahead. Thanks for sharing your talent. Well, thank you so much, Neppy. That's very sweet. Yeah. That really encouraged us. And that is so true that when you first start learning something, it's really hard to make yourself do it because it doesn't come out very good at first. Right. She's talking about the faith art show, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think so. Yeah. And then the second one I wanted to read is from Mary. And Mary said, I'm so thankful for the joy of faith art journaling. When I learn a new technique and look at the pictures initially, it doesn't say I love Jesus, though I pray before I begin each picture that God will guide my hand and all the glory will go to him. Art journaling for me is communion with God and communicating him to the viewer. When I go home to be with the Lord, my journals stay behind and I pray they will somehow guide the viewer to realize that Jesus lives, loves them, and is Lord of all. Oh, I, I know. Love that. So sweet. I, I love that too. too. And then she cracked me up because she said, I don't do Facebook and I don't know what a hashtag is. But <laughs> God has led me to you, sisters in Christ, who get faith art. Hallelujah. Oh, that's so precious. That really is. Thank you so much, Mary. That yeah. really, really blessed and encouraged us. I think, I'm not sure, but I think that was the very first comment or letter or anything that we got was from Mary. Yes. And Mm -hmm. so we were all extremely excited to read that. So thank you. And if you would like us to read your comment or question during our Happy Mail segment, just leave us a comment on the blog or you can leave it as a review on Apple Podcasts or even on Instagram, anywhere you can find us. You can even email us if you want to ask us a question or leave us a comment. We would love that. Yes, we would. Yes, please. So we are going to talk about creativity and starting new things and how to start. Because a lot of times you feel creative and you want to start, you want to get in your room, you've got the time, your supplies are all there, and then you just kind of freeze. Does that ever happen to you guys? Absolutely. All the time. All the time. (laughs) Yeah. And you have no excuse because you have time, you have your stuff, you have your supplies, but you just kind of (laughs) don't know what to do. (laughs) We have so many supplies. (laughs) I know. Like supplies is definitely not my problem. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> or maybe that is my problem because that's actually one of the things that I wanted to talk about was how buying supplies, I mean it's fun and I I, mean, I don't think you should not buy supplies, but you can sometimes use buying supplies as more of a procrastination, right? Yes. Than actually yes. You don't really need anything, but you just end up doing that because you kind of get like a little buzz when you buy a new supply and yep. 
So it's like this creativity buzz that you get. You know, you're using that to get that creative feeling, but instead you go buy something. It's kind of like, sorry if you like Diet Coke, but to me, it's kind of like Diet Coke. People get addicted to Diet Coke Mm -hmm. and it tastes like it's sweet, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's fake sugar. So it's not the same. It's not a totally a good analogy because (laughs) sugar is not good for you either. (laughs) No, it's not. Yeah. But it's kind of like if you're sitting and buying stuff, you feel like you're doing something when you're really not creating anything. But it kind of gives me that same feeling of I'm getting something done, but I'm really not. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it is. It's just like a procrastination thing, Mm -hmm. but it's really fun procrastination. (laughs) Oh, boy, it sure is. (laughs) Well, and for me, sometimes my brain is going in all directions at all times, like a squirrel that's drank too much Coke or something. (laughs) That's true. I've seen it. That's true, (laughs) y'all. I have so many ideas that I get overwhelmed very easily with ideas. Yeah, And I buy stuff with full intentions to use and then it it just kind of sits and then I get really overwhelmed like where do I even start Mm -hmm. yeah well and I think oh my gosh I'm waiting for this product to come in and then it comes in and sits on my desk for three days like y'all I know we just bought this the other day all three of us bought it the Tim Holtz uh little dryer with that I know what you're talking about (laughs) <laughs> yes, you do. I don't know what you're talking about. You're ratting us out. <laughs> no, I came to y'all hoping that you would keep me from buying something. And no, no, you did not. Not only did you tell me to buy it, but you bought it too. <laughs> y'all should have seen our text, our text oh, messages gosh. back and forth. Lori was like, I don't need this, do I? And we're like, where did you, yep. where is that? What, what site did you get that on? We're both on, instead of talking her out of it, we're both on there buying it. Yeah. But what is that little call? What is that? It's like a craft. The heat the gun. Heat gun. Heat it. Yes. The heat heat it. it craft tool. Craft gun. Yes. yes. And I was think I kept thinking for days, I'm going to wait until I get this. And then it's going to be so much fun to play with all my distress oxides because I need to dry each one before I put a new color on. Yes. Well, it's been sitting on my desk for almost a day now. And I haven't lo- even, I turned it on. Because I wanted to see how loud it was or how quiet it was. And that was it. I would like to proudly say that I have actually used mine a couple of times. Ah, Nice. Yes. Well, I haven't actually gotten mine yet because I filled up my basket with stuff and I keep adding stuff to it. So I haven't actually (laughs) I haven't actually checked out yet. Oh my gosh. And then I bought some of those oxide inks that Jess was telling us about Mm -hmm. last week. And Mm -hmm. so I'm waiting for those too. So those are fun. They are so fun. I'm actually procrastinating shopping. (laughs) Whoa, that's big. I know. Let me just tell you, Melissa, you're going to need that drying tool when you get those oxides. So you might just want to push go. I should just just hit check out. (laughs) Agreed. I mean, add whatever you need for free shipping. At least get free yeah. shipping on your order. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, I want to say this about the little craft heat it tool. Since we, you know, we talk about stuff like that. I was so impressed the first time I used it at the lack of curl on my pages compared to an embossing gun. Really? Mm. Yes. Oh, that's good to know. And it is quiet. Yeah. Way more quiet than an embossing gun. Way yep. more quiet. Okay, y'all. I'm going to check out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So because starting is hard and because, you know, it involves procrastination. Oh, I was going to say procrastination, I think is a symptom of perfectionism. I think, oh, yes. and maybe yeah. not for everybody, but it's kind of like a fear of failure thing. Like, well, if I don't actually open this and try it, then I won't make any mistakes. You know, I mean, we don't actually think that consciously, but I think subconsciously it's under there, like the sort of, oh, it's new and I'm not going to be good at it at first. And what if this happens or what if I waste it? Yes, that is so true. I I have an issue with not wanting to waste products. I'm always worried I'm going to run out of something I like. So Mm -hmm. don't use too much Mm -hmm. when that's ridiculous. I mean, we all know we buy stuff. Why not use what we more have and yeah use, use it, it, it up. more yeah mm-hmm. that's so true and i do the same thing i save things that i like i'm going to save it for the special project and it's just silly because the special project will never come that's right i have a video where i'm doing a flip through of a journal and i've got a susan branch die cut because i love her stuff and i don't know if y'all remember this years ago she had like a scrapbook line mm-hmm 
and it was so beautiful and I had every piece of it and I wouldn't use it. And I put that die cut in my journal and I looked at it and it had a copyright date of, I want to say 2003. Oh my. Wow. I know. And I was like, are you (laughs) kidding me? I've had this in my stuff for, that's like almost 20 years. That's crazy. First of all, I do not need to be doing that math because. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It hurts, doesn't it? It's painful. It hurts. Yeah. Ouch. I feel mm-hmm. that. Uh, I don't know how anything could be 20 years ago when I'm only 20. Right. That's uh, right. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but I, I was just like, I need to use my stuff. I need to use my stuff. So that's one of the things that we want to talk about is how to do that, how to start doing things. Yes. Yes. So Jess, do you have some, like what you do to start? You know, sometimes if I have a real block, And I can just sit down and I'm just staring at the wall or the overwhelming amount of stuff on my desk. It's that sometimes it's just starting and getting, I know that, you know, we're going to talk about paper, but getting paper that makes you feel happy and Mm -hmm. putting Mm -hmm. your favorite color down on it. That's how I start most of the time is I start with what I like the most. And then it can branch out from there because then, oh, I'm like, oh. I could add this or, Ooh, then I can do this because Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know that I'm more mixed media and collage and all that. Mine's never going to stick with just painting a picture. So it's just, usually I start with a paper I like and a color I like, and then go from there. Get some color on the page. Yeah. Well, and a perfect example is yesterday I was trying to think of a fun find. So I put together my thoughts for the fun find, which I won't tell you about yet because we haven't gone there yet, but I hadn't even <laughs> used this product yet. I'd ordered it and it's been sitting in my craft room for weeks. I thought, well, I guess I probably should try it before I say it's a fun find. Cause I mean, it's pretty and all, but let's see how it works. <laughs> and I thought I just have to get it down. So I just took the products and put them down on paper and something. And that kind of got the creativity flowing. And Jess, I think you might be proud of me because it's so far, it's not done yet, but it's a little collagey. I'm so proud. I know. (laughs) So proud. (laughs) We'll see what happens. (laughs) Well, and I will be honest, sometimes when I've had months of feeling like I'm just not moving any direction or enjoying what I'm doing, those challenges that you find at different times are Mm -hmm. huge for me to get past a block. They, They make me get outside of my comfort zone where I may not just be putting my favorite color down, but I am doing what somebody else tells me to do. And that helps me learn new techniques, learn different Mm -hmm. things I like. And that usually will get me started again. Yes. Junk Journal July was that for us last year, Jessica. You got me doing that. And I've never done something for every day for 30 days or 31 days or whatever it was. So it was such a fun thing because I actually did it and I was proud of myself and I like the stuff that I made. Right. And trying new things is really hard because when you first start, it doesn't look very good because you're not good at it. You've never done it before. And I homeschooled my boys and I used to tell them they would get so frustrated when we would start something new. And you're a teacher, Jess, so I'm sure you experience this with your kids too. And I would tell them it's going to feel uncomfortable because you've never done this before. Right. And so it's okay. Just feel the discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just be okay with, I don't know how to do this. I have to ask a lot of questions. I have to try it and then not like it and then try it again. And particularly with writing, my youngest son, he just, he still doesn't like writing, but yeah, but he really struggled with that because that wasn't, a, he's more science and math and that, and it didn't come naturally for him. So he just didn't like that. He didn't already know how to do it. And I think I've I feel that in myself a lot too. When I try something new, I I feel like I'm a little better now as I've gotten older, but definitely when I was younger, if I didn't do it perfectly the first time, I was like, well, I'm obviously not good at that. Throw it in the trash. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, that stops us from trying things too, is because we don't know how to do it. Absolutely. Just pushing past that discomfort of not knowing and just being okay with it looking ugly at first. Yes, absolutely. And you know, something I recently discovered, I think I shared it in one of our previous podcasts about mistakes are only opportunities for more layers. Like that Mm -hmm. has really hit home to me that if you don't like it, you can just cover it up and do something else. So it helps me, it gives me that freedom to go ahead and try something without having to love it. Yeah. And I told this story in an email, I think a couple weeks ago, but when I first learned crochet, I was trying to make this little 
granny square mm-hmm. and it kept coming out like a triangle <laughs> every <laughs> single time. It, and I was just like, I was so frustrated. And I, I remember just thinking, okay, I'm just not good at this crochet. i obviously, cause I'm reading the pattern. I'm doing exactly what they say and it coming out like a triangle. Mm-hmm. And my husband actually said, you know, just keep trying it. You'll, you'll figure it out. There's just, you're just missing one thing or something. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I really wanted to just quit. And I'm so glad I didn't because I love crochet now. So I just kept reading and kept trying it. And like, I think the fifth time I did it or something, I realized there was, there was just like this one turn that I wasn't doing. And that was making it come out like a triangle. And as soon as I changed that one thing, it came out great every time after that. So it's just that thing of not giving up right before you learn the thing. You yes. Know? Mm-hmm. Persevere. Mm -hmm. That is one of my favorite words. And I tell my students that all the time. The things you really want in life are not going to be easy. And for the longest time, I'd never, I I didn't draw. I couldn't draw a stick person. I didn't, I definitely didn't paint. That would have been terrifying. But I kept looking at things and they were so pretty. And I was not a kid that could do art. And, and so it's really about perseverance and practice. And yep. the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And the more your eye is going to see things and your hand is going to remember how you drew that last time and it looked good. Yeah. And even as a grown adult, you can try new things. Definitely. I think recognizing that feeling will help you start. Yes. It's when you don't recognize it, you don't even realize you're putting it off because of that feeling. Yes. So if you acknowledge it and say, okay, I don't want to do this because it feels scary, but it's okay. I can do it. I can feel scared and uncomfortable and just do it anyway and look at my paper and not like it and then make another one. Yes. Yep. For me anyway, that really helps for me to just acknowledge why I don't want to start, you know. Yeah. And I think sometimes we forget, or I do anyways, not everything I create has to go on Instagram. Not everything is going to be fabulous. Some of it can just go in the trash if I hate it, you know? Yes. But it doesn't mean that you're not a good artist or it doesn't mean you can't create something beautiful. It's just, we all have our times that something's not beautiful and it's okay. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's necessary. If you don't ever let yourself make stuff that doesn't look good, you're not going to make anything because... Yep. There's yes. a huge percentage of what you make doesn't look good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because, you're, because you're just practicing and learning and trying things. Well, okay. So I wanted to give a couple of tips that help me. And then you guys jump in there if you've got tips or or you've tried any of these before. But okay. my, my number one tip the, that this helps me, and it sounds so simple and like it wouldn't work, but I just tell myself, this is just a practice one. So no matter what it is I'm doing, so if it's Mm -hmm. a journal page or I'm making a journal or I'm crocheting something, I just say, first, I'm going to do a practice one. And when I was, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11, I remember being at my grandmother's and she was making pancakes and they kind of started to fall apart. And she said, you know, the first ones are always for the puppies. (laughs) So she put them in the dog dish, you know, and they went crazy. And, and that really stuck with me that it didn't even bother her. She was like, she knew the first ones were not going to come out right. And that was fine. She said, the first ones are always for the puppies. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still, I'm stealing that. Like I'm using that with my family and my pancakes from now on. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? The first ones never come out good. That's true. Yeah. But that's true with our art too. Yes, it is. That's brilliant, you need that actually. warm up time. Mm-hmm. And so what I, I just say, this is my practice one. And then later, if it turns out I love it, it doesn't have to be the practice one. Right. But right. If, I, if I tell myself it's just the practice one, then it just takes all that pressure off. Mm-hmm. Mentally, you're giving yourself some freedom. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. You're just yep. saying, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just practicing. This isn't the real one. Yeah. So I love that. So then the next one is not editing as you go. So it's kind of like when you're writing a paper, they tell you not to hit backspace and edit, Uh but to just get all your thoughts on the paper. And then you can go back and proofread and edit later. But if you stop and proofread, then it kind of breaks the flow and you, Mm -hmm. you can lose your, your train of thought. It's kind of that same thing that don't try and edit, you know, the composition, just get in there and just start playing and just start doing things. Because I think the editing really stops you from trying new things too. 
Oh, yeah. I would agree with that. And then the third one is to limit your choices. So (laughs) (laughs) for supply addicts, that's a little hard. Yeah, that could be real helpful. (laughs) (laughs) It it doesn't mean you don't have to have supplies, all the supplies, but get what I do is I get like a tray or a basket or something. And I just kind of go through and say, I think I want to use sequins today and fabric. And you can always change your mind later, but just pull a few things and then put that on your table. And that's what you're going to use for this project. And that way you're not constantly like, I don't know, should I use it? Especially when you have a lot of stuff, it's like, you don't know what to use. Uh Mm -hmm. That overwhelming (laughs) aspect Mm -hmm. comes in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, Oh, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. That was my fault. (laughs) No, <laughs> believe me, you're not here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could just blame it all on you, Jess. That would be I, awesome. Life would be so much easier, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for oh. it. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> so I try to have a formula like pick one surface, two products, like it's going to be paint or it's going to be stamps and then three colors and try to stick with a color family like the cools or the warms. So red, pink, and orange, which is almost always what I choose mm. <laughs> and, or blue, purple, green. And that's your little formula. You're just like going to pick one, two, and three. That's good. I like that a lot. Yep. And that really limits your brain from getting overwhelmed with all the colors sitting in front of you. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause all the colors are so pretty. <laughs> right. Yes, they are. They are so pretty and you need them all because yeah. you might need that color. You never use one day. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's another way to really challenge yourself is to use a color, you know, use something that you don't normally use. Pull yeah, that out the- and do it. Something that helps me if I've made a mistake is my thought is I can always paint over it. Yep. It doesn't matter if it's a collage. It doesn't matter if you have fake flowers on your page. If you don't like it, you can paint over it. Yes. And it just adds texture and layers to the page. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what happened with me this last week, Jess. You helped me with that. I created a tag and y'all, it was a hot mess. It was bad. (laughs) It was really bad. I thought I could not do anything with this. And I sent it to Jessica and I'm like, help me, please. She said, oh, just slap some paint on it. Slap some gesso over it. It'll be fine. And and I did. And it was fabulous. It it turned out so pretty. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But it was not, I'm not lying. It was a mess, a mess before that. So, but that's just part of that evolution of creation. I think everything kind of starts off a mess. Yes. That's another thing that I tell myself a lot when I'm making something. I'm like, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look like what I thought. And then I just say, but you're not done. So just right. keep going. Yep. And I think keep going is a really important sentiment to tell yourself because for some reason we just want to quit. You know, you just feel this, just, uh, I'm just give up on this. And I think it's really important not to. Yep. Absolutely. And I think sometimes too, we just need a little bit of space. Yes. I just need to walk away for a little while and I'll come back later and see what else. I think you see it with fresh eyes and it's a little bit easier to keep going then. If I get super frustrated, I'll just chuck it in the trash. But if I can just take a few minutes and walk away, it usually will help me to get some perspective. Yeah. And I try not to throw anything away even anymore because I have come across things that I made like a couple of years ago. And I remember thinking how much I hated it. Mm -hmm. And then I pull it out and I'm like, Oh, that's really cute. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just the distance of being away from it and not looking at it with those super critical eyes when you're making it. Right. That a lot of times then you look at it later and you really like it. Those are good tips, Mel. Do we want to talk about paper now? Yes, because paper's awesome. We always want to talk about paper. Our supply today that we're talking about (laughs) is paper. And I think all three of us are pretty obsessed with paper. Yes. (laughs) Afraid so. Are we going to tie this in with our fun finds or are we just going to talk about some paper first? Yeah. That's what I was thinking because we've got fun finds and we also have paper involved in our challenge this week. So I was trying not to get them mixed up like I did last week. (laughs) That's all right. It all goes together eventually. Yeah. Week before last, I guess, I I totally got all out of order. We're going to talk about all different kinds of paper. I guess let's talk about what's your favorite kind of paper first. Oh. Oh, gosh. No, but that's really difficult. Because my fun find may not be my favorite type of paper. True. Because it's just a good paper. (laughs) Well, 
I, okay, pattern paper is what I always buy. So I know it's not a maybe a type of paper, but patterned paper is yeah, where is. I go. If I go to Michael's, I come back with stacks of pattern paper that I don't need. (laughs) I love printed paper. Yeah, me too. I think my favorite is vintage paper. Yes. Yes. I just love the graphics so much. And and also I just love vintage paper just has a different feel to it. Yep. It was like they weren't afraid to use good materials or something, you know, everything wasn't thin and cheap. It was thick and I don't know. The ink was even nicer and I just love vintage paper. Mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. I think it's harder to find though. I haven't been able to find, like I go to a lot of state sales and I haven't been able to find it. I know you can order on Etsy and whatnot, but I always like to just try to rummage around and find something. And I have not had a lot of luck, but I love looking at it. (laughs) Yeah, me too. (laughs) Well, I know I, I am not as much a pattern paper person. Like that's not a struggle of mine for the most part. Occasionally there's something that pulls me in. Mine is old books and Mm -hmm. ledger papers. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing how you can put a color on white paper, a paint or an ink or a watercolor on white paper and it looks one way. And then you put it on those vintage book pages or Mm -hmm. ledger paper and it looks completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the unknown when you use those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. Oh, can I have two favorites? (laughs) No, it's not allowed. <laughs> well, you said ledger, and I love everything graph, like yes. graph paper, ledger paper. Yeah, me too. Oh, my gosh. It just makes my heart sing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Office paper. Yes. Yeah, me too. I love that. That was probably from being a kid, and that was the kind of paper that you could mm-hmm. get yes. a hold of. I remember asking my dad for paper. My dad was a computer programmer. And so he would bring home these stacks of, of printer paper. The, remember the kind that had the little holes in it? <gasps> I have a bunch of it. Yes. I found that at an estate sale and I sent some to Jess. I'll have to yep. send you some, Mel. Yep. Oh, I would love that. It is. It's thicker and it almost feels like cotton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I loved tearing the strips off the side oh, yes. when I was a kid and then playing with them and stuff. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yes. Well, I was going to say, I, it's so funny because sometimes people will sit things out to go in the trash, not on the side of the road. Usually like just random places I'll be in. Somebody will be wanting to throw away something. But one time I got a pack of old graph paper that had gotten wet, probably from rain or just it wasn't like gross wet, but I love that because it just added even more texture to the graph texture. paper. Yes. Me too. I love how graph paper, like cheap graph paper and notebook <gasps> paper runs. Yes. When you paint on it, the blue lines run. I love that. Yep. And I love the crinkle of it. You know, I love crinkle. Oh, me too. Wet paper that's been wet and then it's dried and it's yes. crunchy and crinkly. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I love that too. I love the sound it makes. And then I had a tip for, especially, this is especially important for vintage papers, but if you coat the surface of your paper before you paint on it, unless you like the look of how the ink or the paint soaks into paper, which sometimes, you know, that might be what you're going for, but it reacts really differently and it kind of preserves the look of your vintage paper. Mm -hmm. If you put some clear gesso on it Mm -hmm. first and then do your inks or your paints or whatever. And I didn't always do that. And I still don't because sometimes I'm just impatient, but if I, when I do it and I remember to do it, I really like how it's easier to work on. And then your paper doesn't rip, especially like with vintage papers, because they're, they tend to be really brittle. With, yeah. Brittle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was going to say tender, but that's, yeah. <laughs> you know, that mean works. words. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's our, what's going to be your word for today, Melissa? <laughs> I feel like tender instead of brittle. Is a good <laughs> that makes me think of a cut of meat, tender meat. Yes. Yep. We're talking about paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I love paper so much. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, what other paper tips? My biggest thing is to look places like a place that I love to get old books is libraries when they do their book sales. You can Ooh, find yeah. really old, worn books in those thrift stores. Mm-hmm. Thrift stores. And then you don't feel as bad about pulling them yes. out and using them yes. if they're really a throwaway book at that point. Yes, that is oh, a really good yeah. tip. 
Mm-hmm. The there's a thrift store near me that has a certain day of the week where all their books are 25 cents. Oh wow, oh, gosh, that's awesome! It, yeah, I would be in trouble. I know, I am in trouble. It's ridiculous. I have so many stacks of books. Yes, because I cannot resist yes. them. Those old books with the graphics and everything. I'm the same way. Me too. I found a whole set of ten books at an estate sale of like. <laughs> kids readers and they're so precious and I don't want to tear them apart now they're just yeah. stacked around my house's decor <laughs> so I'm yep. like oh no but there's I mean they're just awesome yeah that is one of the problems too for me is I buy these old books because I'm like oh, I'm gonna make a journal out of this mm-hmm. I'm gonna tear all the pages out and then I sit down and start looking through it when I get home and I'm like I can't tear this yep up. <laughs> yep <laughs> so that is a problem, especially because now when I want to buy a big stack of books at an estate sale, my husband just looks at me, you know, with this uh, raised eyebrow. Yes. <laughs> and I can't even say, I'm going to make a book out of it because he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know. You don't know. That's what you tell him. You don't know. I know. Sometimes I do make books. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there was a book that you made one time on one of your videos, Melissa, that I think it was an old book prayer children's prayer book I don't know but oh, yeah. I'll tell you what I searched high and low for that silly book because it had to be just like yours but I never did find one you didn't find it oh no I know I can't, I I wish that didn't happen I wish there was a way for me to supply everyone with the book yeah that yeah. I find sometimes I find a good source of them and I put a link but a lot of times they're hard to find I don't even remember where I got that one I think it was an estate sale oh gosh yeah but that was one of those ones that was kind of hard to tear up, but I just loved the, the cover was so perfect for yes. what I was making that I just had to do it. Yeah, it was beautiful. I loved that video. Thank you. I have to make an admission. I've never been to an estate sale. How is that possible? I don't know. I don't even know how to find them around here, but my husband the other day admitted he's been to quite a few. I said, wait, wait what? Without you? Without <laughs> me? Wow. I didn't know he'd ever go. <gasps> <Wow. laughs> That's yes. pretty funny. I know. Well, then tell him he has to start bringing you. Right? Yes. He's probably terrified too. Yeah. But yeah, he goes true. and looks for like, you know, he looks for guns and different things of that nature. But I'm like, wait, you've been to what and didn't tell me? <laughs> I cannot believe you've never been to an estate sale. Oh. I can't either. Okay. Let me just give you a little tip. Go to estatesales.net and sign up oh. for their emails. And they'll send you emails when there's something close mm-hmm. to you. And it is dangerous. Yeah. Another good estate sale tip is usually on the second or third day, depending on the company, everything is half price. Yes. Okay. So if you see something that, if it's something you can't live without, then just get it because it won't be there when you go back. But it's fun to go back and see what's left and be like, oh, I wanted that anyway. And now it's 50% off. Yep. (laughs) That's awesome. And remember, you can always ask for a better price. Oh, I'm not good at that. I ended up with a piano for free. What? What? (laughs) (laughs) So some friends of ours, we went to an estate sale. Some friends of ours found a player piano that was beautiful and it works. And so they negotiated the price and they went back after the estate sale was over to pick it up. And my husband went with them to go pick it up along with several other guys because they're very heavy, apparently. And I had been telling my husband, well, they have a piano. I would like a piano. I would, it would look so pretty. So Brett came home with an extra piano. She says, well, if you're going to take this one, I'll give you this one for free. Oh, and our friend looked at wow. my husband and said, your wife wanted a piano. <laughs> so now we have a piano. Wow. Isn't that's that crazy? Awesome. I know. Now that's I'm so excited cool. about an estate sale. <laughs> Because we need more supplies, right? I know. Oh, my gosh. No kidding. I, I mean, I'm sure we're all a little short on paper. So, oh, yeah. right. Yeah. I'm almost out. <laughs> and someday we need to talk about storage of supplies, y'all, because yes. I struggle with that. I love to organize my craft room and I like to redo it. But that's just, I think, another way of putting everything off. Then I oh, don't yeah, craft definitely. because I've got to clean. <laughs> yes. So. That's definitely a procrastination tactic. Yes. yes. I don't uh, struggle with that one myself too much. I don't either. (laughs) I don't anywhere else in the house. I struggle (laughs) with actually organizing it. Mm -hmm. I don't struggle with cleaning. (laughs) It just doesn't happen in here. No. Yeah. Why bother? It comes right back. That's right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
Well, and my room is sort of the catch-all, I think, for the rest of the house. When people don't know what to do with something, they're like, just put it in mom's art room. Oh, (laughs) no. I have that too. But it's usually me. I'm like, I don't really know where to put this right now, so I'll just sit it in here for now. Yeah. Yeah. I do it too. Yeah. It's not just the people in the house. It's me too. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, gracious. Okay. So are we ready for fun finds? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my fun find is glassine paper. Mm. And this isn't super new because I I think I have a link to this already on my link tree, but I'm going to put it in the show notes. But I just love glassine paper so much. And it's different than parchment or deli paper because it's a lot clearer. Is that the mm-hmm. right way to say that? Yeah. <laughs> Me and words. <laughs> transparent. Transparent. <laughs> Clearer, transparent. It's all it beats the same. Yeah. It's <laughs> transparent. It's the grown-up way to say it. <laughs> but yeah, I just love it. And it's very crinkly and you can oh, paint yeah. on it. You can put inks on it. You can oh, sew on it. I've never tried that. I've got a couple of videos And then when you buy it in paper form, like you get the glassine bags, like a lot of people will put their ephemera in that when you buy ephemera. So you get little glassine bags, but they're pretty crumpled and crinkled by the time you get them, Mm -hmm. which is fine. That's still wonderful. But when you buy the glassine paper, it's like in a little stack and it's just perfectly clear and straight. I've never bought glassine paper. Uh, I've never bought white glassine paper. I did find one time at Tuesday morning a package of we are memory keepers glassine paper and they're printed Ooh. on i haven't even opened them <laughs> what <laughs> but i still have it <laughs> does this surprise you i mean it's been probably at least a year at least <laughs> you're just waiting for the right project though. yes <laughs> i'm gonna need to see this yeah you need to put that in your challenge this okay week. all right i will do that so glassine paper yeah, order some because when you get it, it's just amazing. You'll love it. I didn't it. even know you could buy glassine paper. I didn't either. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Jessica goes to Amazon. At the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I if it's on Amazon, but it, it might be. I just haven't bought it from there, but it. I got you. You'll love it. You oh my will gosh. love it. But we can find a link in our show notes for yes. your, where you get. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. I'll put it in there where I get mine. And I so want it too. I have a video that I did where I sewed some of the butterflies from one of the kits Uh on it and and it just looks so pretty and then when you turn the page you can kind of see all the butterflies and the strings hanging down oh so pretty and I really love glassing so that's my fun find oh my gosh that's amazing I love that okay Jess what's your fun find well mine's not as fun as that or as fancy (laughs) but (laughs) <laughs> Mine is the 28 pound printer paper because it's thicker and nicer. Mm. And I actually use the HP premium. Mm-hmm. I love printing your ephemera on those sheets. They are so oh. crisp and clear and easy to cut. I like printing on cardstock sometimes too, but to me, they're, they print prettier on this paper. Okay. It's like presentation paper? Yes. It's kind of like presentation paper. Okay. I use a presentation paper from, I can't think of their name now. It's a printing company. I like it. It's 32 pound. And so it's a little bit thicker, but it's not as thick as cardstock. And it's double sided matte, like matte. And it's really nice. But does it feel like paper or is it like more like cardstock? I don't, I can't. What's presentation paper? It's just. It feels like paper, but it's thicker than regular printer paper, but it's thinner than cardstock. Yeah. Well, I have I have HP 32 pound paper. Yeah, that's and the I like same, that a probably. lot. Okay. Yeah. Cuz mine's 32 pound. Okay. But I didn't know they made 28 pound presentation paper cuz I might like to try that. And I'm assuming it's presentation. It's called premium. Mhm. And I just really, really like it. It's what I like to print. Like if my my son has something turned in at school or anything I'm printing for myself, I print on that. Hmm. I'm going to have to check that out too. Because I'll bet it's cheaper than 32 pound. Probably, Maybe. yeah. So I'll put the link in the show notes to where Jess gets her paper. And what about you, Lori? So I just discovered, well, I'd heard about it a long time ago, but never used it. Rice paper. Mm-hmm. And there's probably a lot of different companies that make it. I bought some Stamparia 
rice paper. I think that's how you say it. And they have the most gorgeous prints. One of the ones, like some botanicals, one was like a map print. Um, They're just beautiful. So I will put a link to, I think I got them on Etsy and I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. But it's just the paper so you can wet it with the paintbrush and then Mm -hmm. it tears just along that line. But it kind of has the fibers that stick out and it's just really, really pretty. It's a very textured paper. That's awesome. I'm very excited right now because I've never bought rice paper before. I haven't either. Now's the time, ladies. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, I think that from this conversation, all three of us have something new to buy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to our listeners. <laughs> sorry, y'all. <laughs> but not sorry because you're going to have fun. That's right. Sorry, right. not sorry. That's right. Okay. I'm scared to move on to the next segment after last time. <laughs> <laughs> did i forget anything i don't um, think so i don't think so, so. now we're going to talk about our challenge to oh, you yes. every week we have been giving you a challenge to do we started off by saying for you to create an inspiration journal so if you're new basically we all just made some type of journal to work in or you can just buy a sketchbook or you could just use a spiral notebook it doesn't have to be a journal but it's fun to make a new journal so we <laughs> had everyone make a new journal and then we've just been giving you an assignment depending on what we were talking about each Week And so this week, since we're starting this new series on creativity, we thought we would do 15 days of creativity. So we're going to give you five challenges to do between now and our next episode, and then we'll give you another five each week. And that way, that will help, like we talked about, sparking your creativity by just doing a little something every day. So our challenge, since we're talking about paper, we've got five papers And so I'm going to tell you that what they are, but I'm also going to make a graphic, which I will send to our newsletter subscribers and uh, it'll be on the blog. And so our five papers are going to be vintage paper, book pages, kitchen paper, envelopes, and tissue paper. You don't have to do them in that order and you don't have to do only one a day, but you can do one a day if that's easier for you. And then you're just going to use that as your prompt to create something in your inspiration journal with one of those papers. Can we talk about what's kitchen paper? Because maybe not everybody understands what that is. Yes. Oh, good idea. Yeah. So kitchen paper is like deli paper, Mm -hmm. parchment paper, wax paper. Tin foil. Yep. Tin foil. Even saran wrap. Mm -hmm. Yes. Butcher paper. Butcher paper. Mm -hmm. Like, it really makes me want to go make something right now talking about all this paper. (laughs) It kind of makes me want to make lunch. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. Lori wants to make food. We want to make journal pages. (laughs) You know how when you watch a cooking show and... Oh, yeah. And then you're like, okay, now I have to go make tacos. That's how I feel like when we talk about (laughs) art supplies. I'm like, I need to go make something. Um, so yeah, that's, that's good on the kitchen paper. And then tissue paper can be like gift wrap tissue paper or what is there other kinds of tissue paper that y'all can think of? You could use a Kleenex, but I don't know (laughs) that that's going to hold up real well, but you're welcome to try. (laughs) Maybe you have an awesome technique with Kleenex. That'd be great. I will laugh so hard if somebody comes up with a cool technique. I need to know if somebody has mastered the art of using Kleenex in their journal. Or even better, toilet paper. (laughs) <laughs> could also be called toilet tissue. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so not oh. into toilet paper crafts. Are y'all? You know what people say when you people use toilet paper rolls for crafts? I just can't. I'm just like, I have done it in a classroom before. We made love bugs with toilet paper rolls. Aww. I did actually collect some for a retreat that I had last year. <laughs> then I threw them all away. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I remember that. I remember if I that. see something cool with a toilet paper roll, then I'll do it with a paper towel roll. Yeah. Paper yes. towel roll, I can do. <laughs> it seems better. <laughs> okay. So totally off subject now. But then we have one more thing with our challenge that we haven't been doing this, but we thought it would be fun to not only give you an art supply to be challenged with, but also a word to be kind of a prompt word. And you don't have to use the word literally in your page, but you can use it just to inspire you, or you can use it in your, in your page, literally, if you want to, any way that it inspires you is fine. 
but we just thought giving you a word each week, you could also find a Bible verse with that word in or a quote with that word in it. Mm -hmm. So our word for this week is new. Since it's spring, we thought new would be a fun word. And so we're doing paper, our five papers, and the word new is our challenge this week. Anything else about the challenge? Mm, our hashtag challenge? Hashtag. Oh, yes. yes. We want you to use the hashtag creative faith and friends. We're just going to use that one hashtag for everything, you know, involved with the podcast. So you don't have to do a specific challenge hashtag, but just creative faith and friends. And we're really excited because we are going to look for people using the creative faith and friends hashtag on Instagram. And we are going to randomly pick someone every week to win a prize from one of us. Yay. Yay. Yeah. We're super excited about it. So if you use it, we will be looking for that and you can tag us too. But just so long as you use that hashtag, that's how we're going to look for people that are participating. And then we will announce on the show each week. So next week we'll announce for this week who won the prize. So we're excited about that. That will be fun. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for listening today. And before we go, we just want to share with you where you can find us. Just where can we find you online? You can find me on Instagram at Just Give Me Jesus or on YouTube also at Just Give Me Jesus. And I have an Etsy shop with Bible covers, uh, little bags, and some art supplies at Choose Joy in Jesus. Yes, a gorgeous shop, which I've already oh, purchased you. from. <laughs> yes, she's an amazing seamstress, y'all. Yeah. And Lori, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram or on YouTube as measure once, cut twice with periods in between the words. And you can find me at pinkpaperpeppermints.com. And I would love to see you on Instagram and chat with you or on the blog or on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed our conversation about paper and getting started and creativity. After we recorded this episode, we couldn't really find a good resource for the glassine paper, so Jess is now going to carry it in her shop, which we're super excited about. You'll find the link to her shop in our show notes. And if you're as crazy about paper as we are, we would love to hear about it. We'd love to know your favorites. Let us know in the comments on the blog so we can share your thoughts and opinions during our new Happy Mail segment. And be sure to use the hashtag creative faith and friends on Instagram when you post your creativity challenges so we can see your journal and you might win a prize. You can find links to everything we talked about in our show notes at pinkpaperpeppermints.com slash 005. I'm Melissa Olson, and I hope you have a week filled with peace and grace, and we will see you next time on Creative Faith and Friends.